little background on me. I am a eight star elite coach. I um, am a nutritionist and a dietitian special. I'm a dietitian nutrition specialist, and I've been working in the health and fitness field for gosh, I've been in the fitness field for 15 years maybe since I was in college, and then um, the my the nutrition went to school, left school, got married, had twins, finished out my degree a little later. Um, and I've been a practicing dietitian and a, a registered dietitian and nutrition specialist for five years. So um, just to kind of give you a little background, I worked um, in Thousand Oaks and I worked in Woodland Hills with an endocrinologist, loved him, loved working in the field, loved working with patients, um, loved helping people really get well. But I realized that there was a big difference between like what we do um, in the clinic and like clinically and what we do for like wellness and as our healthcare has become a little has had many changes in the last uh, eight years um, the healthcare systems today don't offer as much wellness as they did you know prior to Obamacare and the things that have been put in place well some things for Obamacare are really great other things in terms of like wellness and wellness care um, are not as great. So it kind of made me look at the scope of um, nutrition dietetics of really wanting to be able to help people. So while I was practicing with an endocrinologist, a friend of mine um, came to me and was, um, she came to me, we were 35 years old. She was like, hey, listen, I've got, you know, breast cancer. Uh, it's stage four. And she's like, you know, before she allowed me to even get any, any kind of emotion out of it, she was like, there's no cure. I'm cool with that. I already know. But I want a meal replacement. I've been through this before. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. rewind. Wait a second. I mean, how long have you been diagnosed? Because I was diagnosed when I was 32. I had a spot on her, like one of her breasts, and they removed it. And she's like, I've been clean for two years and they just found a spot on my, my femur and my tailbone. And she's like, so it's metastasized. And so, um, she was like, Hey, you know, I, I need something to help me out. I need a meal replacement because when I go under for chemo and radiation, I get really, really sick and I don't eat and that doesn't help me. And the medication just makes me bloat and I gain weight and it's awful. So She's like, what about this whey stuff at Costco? Or, you know, what about this other thing that uh, she was telling me something about these GNC? And I was like, no. And she's like, what about, you know, um, Herbalife? I'm like, okay, if you look at Herbalife, the fourth ingredient is tree bark. So, no, they're taking herbs to a completely different level. Unfortunately, the herbs that are in tree bark are not going to help you. They're not going to give you much. Um, so I said, let me come up with something. Um, had a friend out here in uh, Moore Park, California, who has an amazing superfood company. Um, it's where I used to get my goji berries. I used to source them directly from him because um, he would get them from Chile and bring them in, and they're amazing. And I, I trusted him. I'd get my maca from him. Um, I would get my lutein from him, like all of the adaptogenic herbs that I was taking and just incorporating into my daily life anyway before Beachbody. Um, I was always getting those from him. I trusted him. He was a trusted source. So he was like, I said to him, like, this is what I want. I want, you know, goji berries. I want bilberries. I want acaya. I want um, arshwanda. I want marmoranda. I want a nice weight isolate. Something that's going to, you know, go into the body slowly, be digested slowly. And he's laughing at me. And I'm like, what? And he's like, first of all, it's going to taste like shit. Second of all, like, it's going to cost $800. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? And so I told him, I said, my friend is diagnosed stage four, um, stage four breast cancer is metastasized. She's got a fight on her hands and she needs something that's going to give her the stability and give her body the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we're not getting anymore from food. So he said, you know, there's this product out there. You should probably look into it. It's called Chicology. Have you ever heard it? I'm like, isn't that part of that like MLM crazy thing? I don't know. I've seen some infomercial for it. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no. And he's like, that's Darren Aline's product. Now, Darren Aline in our industry is like Brad Pitt in the movie industry. We all knew who Darren Aline was, was and is. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, but we also know he sold out to this MLM company. So I was like, I have no interest in talking to him 
Um, you know, he's brilliant. I think that, you know, his, his philosophy was right on, but I don't have any interest in talking to him. He's like, you're not going to talk to him. I just think that you should look into his product. If you really want something that this, what it sounds like you want, this is what you need. So I, um, I started looking into it. And so I said, okay, you know, fine. I'll let her know about it. So I did. Guys, I was still not a coach. This was uh, towards the very beginning of 2014. Um, was not a coach, had no interest in coaching, didn't even really understand what a coach was. All I knew is that those people from Beachbody called me not, not just in 2008, but they also called me in 2010. Uh, because before there was the actual Beachbody back office, there was this thing called the Wowie Gym. And if you ever had bought a program before there was Team Beachbody, you would go and log into the Wowie Gym and you would post. And it had like a post board. It was like a social board. It was kind of like a MySpace where you can go in there and post and then get out. Well, Scotty Hobbs called me once and I told him no. Christine Dreyer called me once. I basically told her that I was a dietitian major and that I eat real food. And I don't need any of that sh Shakeology mumbo jumbo and pretty much hung up on her. And now she's like my upline, 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 upline. Because I think she's she's under Mindy. Mindy Winder's under Christine Dreyer too. Isn't that funny how that works out? Um, so yeah, I did. I hung up on them saying that I'm a dietitian major and I eat real food. And um, so... I didn't know anything about the coaching thing. In 2008, they were talking to me about coaching. 2010, when they called me, they wanted to talk to me about Shakeology. And I, both of them, I ignored them. Um, then, 2014, got my girlfriend started on Shakeology. Three months later, her oncologist from OHSU, big, huge hospital up in Portland, Oregon, uh, calls me. And he's like, this is Dr. So-and-so. You've been working with patient so-and-so. And I just want to tell you, the I, I wanted to thank you, first of all, because the work that you've been doing with her is amazing. She can't say enough great things about you. Second of all, just wanted to let you know her free radicals. So free radicals are things that we all have in our body, but they're what fights off bacteria and disease. Um, she's like the free radicals in her system have been able to pull away from the tumor source, which we have been trying to do for like the last six or seven years since she, or six or seven months. And since she's been with you, the free radicals in her, in her body have been able to pull away from the cancer source. We're actually going to be able to go in and radiate, which is awesome. So he was like, I have three other patients. Can you, what's your patient load? Can you take them? I'm like, sure. And I remember that day because I called my husband. I was like, okay, here's this little, like, little dietitian like here out here in Southern California and some big, you know, hoity-toity oncologist from OHSU calls me. Like, that was crazy. And so, um, still, guys, not a coach. Just gave them the link and said, go buy this. Had zero intention on even understanding what coaching was. Didn't even really, wasn't on my radar at all, at all, at all. I just wanted to help my friend. Um, so now we're into April and my cousin on Facebook, uh, one of my really close cousins on Facebook posted something about her doing some diet program. And all I remember seeing was like, oh, I don't even know where all my containers are. All these like little containers all over her like picture post, right? And I'm looking at her and she's talking about food and she's talking about making some type of lemon halibut with green beans. And she was going to have like a little yellow container of rice. And I'm reading this post and, and I picked up my phone and I called her and I said, what in the heck are you doing? If you needed help, why didn't you call me? What are you doing? What program? What, who took your money now? Like, is this Weight Watchers? Is this like, what are you doing? And she's like, no, 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 this is a really amazing program. This is, it's, it's going to work this time. I, I'm really committed. I'm really going to do it. So she was telling me all about the 21 day fix, but I had no idea what it was. And I said, listen, I'll be in Portland in two weeks for spring break. I'll come over. I'll, I'll talk to you, but I've got some meal plans and I can help you with this. She's like, no, I'm really going to do it this time. Like her husband was helping her cook all the food and she was like, I'm doing it. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go to her house two weeks later and she <laughs> pulls out the containers and she lays out the book and she's telling about the workouts and, you know, she's showing me all the meal plans that she's, that she's, um, you know, downloaded and she's got like a whole portfolio of stuff. Right. And she pulls out 
this box of Shakeology because her coach had her, got her set up on the 24 pack. So she lays them all out, fans them all out, right? And I'm like, wait a second. This is that Shakeology stuff. Ding dong, totally clicked. All of a sudden I realized that these little packages were coming together. They were doing like some type of workout thing. I still up to that point, I had no idea that they were something that you could buy together in a kit to actually offer a total solution. I just didn't even, those things didn't click to me. Um, so, still didn't sign up as a coach. I was pissed because I was like, I totally could have got you hooked up with this. And she's like, oh, I have a coach. I'm like, okay, whatever. Didn't ask her coach's name. I'm like, whatever, is your coach a nutritionist? She's like, no, she's just a person. She's a friend of mine. She's helping me. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I started watching her, my cousin. And then I saw who her coach was, and it was Steph Davies. So I started watching Steph. And I didn't, I'm like, who in the heck is this chick? She's clearly not a nutritionist. Like, you know, you watch her, you watch her life, and you're just so enthralled because she's, she's just not your cookie cutter, like, professional, right? So I'm watching her. I sent her a friend's request. And, of course, she accepted my friend's request. I just watched her. I just watched her. And I think I corresponded a few times. Um, my cousin never got past like two or three months on the program, but that's just her because that's just the way that she is. Um, but I watched her and then my friend Luce, who is my upline coach, um, is really good friends with Steph Davies' mom. They're actually best friends and her and Steph Davies have been friends for a long, long time. So now it's July, okay, end of July. We came to Portland for the summer. My parents live up in Portland. So we came to Portland for the summer and I had called loose because I was like, let's take the kids out to Persimmons golf course. Let's like take kids golfing. So I called her. She's like, Hey, I have to, I have to push back our, our time together because I'm going to go have this meeting. And she goes, and you know, I'm going to go have this meeting. And I really think that you would be great. I'm going to go meet with this person. And if it's really good, I really want to talk to you about it. And I said, Luce, are you going to go meet with Steph Davies? Because if you're going to go meet with Steph Davies, I'm going to come with you and I'm going to sign up. And I think I have two people I want to bring with me. She's like, holy shit. Like what? She's like, I never asked Rachel to be my coach. Rachel was like, hey, are you going to go hang out with that Steph Davies chick? Because I think I want to come hang out with you. And I did. I went and met with them at their GSR. Like Luce had just signed up and I brought two people with me and signed them up right then and there. Um, so she was like, okay, like this is, she's going to be off and flying. Um, I got it. And I think that the reason why I gave you that is that whole backstory is, is the importance of understanding that first and foremost, don't ever stop posting on Facebook, period. I know this is not, we're not talking about that, but I'm just telling you, I watched for six flipping months. If you want somebody to actually trust you and trust what you're doing and trust what you're saying, you have to back that up with consistency. If I did not follow my cousin and if I didn't see Steph Davies, you know, following up and posting and, and being consistent, I would have been like, cause my cousin totally fell off the log. Like she went off the, like she always does. Like she can't commit to anything to save her life. So I knew that she wasn't going to commit to this, but I want to see if this coach chick, I wanted to see if she was in it for the long haul, because if I was going to invest myself, my time, my clientele, and I was going to build a business, I had to know the person that I was going to build this with was solid. Otherwise, I'm not building with you, period. And, it, and I say that with conviction because I am professional and there was a lot of, there was a lot of um, pressure from me to put my name behind this. So if I was going to put my name behind anything, I was going to make sure that it was 100% solid before I ever signed up. So I just want to tell you guys that. And I tell that to my team. So I'm telling that to your, to Whitney's team, telling that to you guys, that no one's going to sign up with you and trust you with their health, you guys, with their health. I don't care if you're never, you're not even near your goal. I don't care if you're a brand new coach. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's the consistency of showing up because there's so many scams out there. There are so many things that people buy into, right? Because I think so-and-so said that they're going to do it and it works. And then two months later, they're nowhere to be seen. So don't be that coach. Don't be that person. Um, so here's the, the, do you guys have any questions before I go on from there about anything? Okay. So I'm going to go into Shakeology. So I, 
I told Whitney, I suggested that you guys have pen and paper um, because I'm going to give you guys a quick anatomy, physiology, anatomy and physiology, anatomy and um, the physiology lesson on your body. And like, if I can speak um, on your body, your body's digestive system, your circulatory system and how Shakeology really works within your anatomy. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to have a sip of water so I can speak. And I go really, really fast. So if you guys ever need me to slow down or repeat something, just raise your hand and I'll go back and repeat it, okay? Mm. Okay, so Shakeology. Shakeology is one of those things that, um, how I explain it to people and how I am able to support people and, and have, um, and have not just loyalty within my team, but also within my customers, but more importantly, with results within my challenge groups. So, Shakeology is not one of those things where you can just drink it and go out and have a cheeseburger, or drink it and think it's some kind of magic thing that's gonna take your resting heart rate and shoot it up through the roof. It doesn't work that way. Um, that's not how Shakeology is formulated. Shakeology is formulated in a specific to give your body what it, um, what it doesn't get anymore from the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we have that we have available to us sourced through our foods. So farm to table, anymore now, farm to table, we are losing between 30 and 40%, literally, from the farm to the table, and that is for organic produce and organic vegetables and anything that's labeled organic or GMO, we're still losing between 30 and 40%. Anything that's not labeled organic, GMO, uh, non-GMO, we lose between 55 to up to 70, depending on where they are being shipped from and where they're, you know, like where they're being farmed and how they're being brought in and then how they're being kept and stored until they go out onto the store shelf and then from the store shelf on into our house and then onto our tables or into our mouths or however we're doing it. So 20 years ago, food was a lot different. You could go to McDonald's and get yourself a happy meal and it wasn't nearly as bad as it is today. I did a, um, a thesis paper on the very beginning of the year. This is my senior year. I went and you know got myself one of those little happy meals, right? And let it sit in a bag, untouched, just sat in a bag. Within the entire school year, nine and a half months later, the bun, the meat, the cheese looked like kitchen play food. There was no mold. There was no green stuff. It literally looked like hardened plastic. The French fries completely, I mean, you could, they're like a deck of cards. You can just throw them out of the box and they just all scattered around. No mold. Nothing, not even any discoloration. Maybe a few of them because you can tell they were oversaturated with oil. They were kind of like soggy and they were wrinkly, but for the most part, they looked just like they had been purchased. How disgusting is that? To think that that's what we eat? And if that's what it does without even any air exposure, imagine what your body is trying to do to digest it. And I'm not trying to shame anybody here because I'm, I'm not, I eat, there's times where we eat fast food. So this isn't about like a poo poo on you. This is an actual giving you a visualization of what's going on in your body's digestive system and why, and why something like our culture today is overweight and suffering from not just cholesterol and high blood pressure and heart disease and cancer, but so many other secondary digestive issues like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, IBS. You guys heard of any of those? Have you guys heard about how much they're on the rise? Okay, so let's let's carpet mentalize that in a section of your brain right now. So I just I just gave you guys that little bit of information. And now let's go to how many of us here are parents? Or, or is there any of you guys that are parents here? Okay, so the majority of us are parents. Okay, so when you have a child um, and you're, you, you know, whether you're giving this child breast milk or, you know, breast or uh, 
formula or whatever it is. When the baby gets to be almost a year, the doctor says, okay, here we go. It's time to introduce solid foods, right? We get to introduce these babies. We get to teach them how to eat. The first things they're trying to pick up, or you know, Cheerios, and, and you're really trying to give them like little bits of, um, I, I started my kids off with applesauce because I would just take the apples and boil them down and like mash it up really well. Bananas, how many of you guys just mashed up bananas? And, and the doctors would always tell you, your pediatrician would tell you, give it five to seven days. Let's see how the, the baby reacts because the digestive system is so young and we're trying to, to grow it up and to learn it, you know, teach it how to take in foods and teach it how to, you know, bring foods in and, and see what happens. If the baby has a rash, stop. Don't give them any more food. Wait. Before you introduce anything else, let the body, you know, let the body get it out of its system and then go back and wait and don't reintroduce anything for another two weeks, right? I mean, that's pretty much the protocol, correct? Okay. Well, they stop doing that when we get to be adults. Kind of sucks. Think about how many different processing, chemicals, additives, preservatives, colors, dyes, different processing things that are going into our foods today that our bodies have never, ever been exposed to, not from birth to today. So what in the world makes us think, or what I, I this is the question I often send out to the FDA, because I'm like, hey, listen, you know, we've never been exposed to dye number, hashtag 52 A, B, whatever. Like, what is this? And why is it in my food? And, and now my body's digestive system is not tolerating this certain type of lactose because certain type of dairy, and I'm going to go to the doctor and the doctor's going to tell me it's because you're lactose intolerant. Or they're going to say, oh, yeah, you have IBS. Let's get you started on this medication. No. It's not that you have IBS and you need to get started on this medication. Let's take a look at your diet and let's see what you're ingesting that is causing all of these secondary issues, Crohn's disease, IBS, irritable bowel, gluten intolerant. There's all these allergies that have come out in the last decade have never, ever, ever been prevalent in our society, but yet now they're prevalent in the society and we're blaming food. I blame the food manufacturers and let's see what they're putting in our food. So now you've got that, that little component, right? So now compartmentalize that, put that somewhere in your brain. Okay. So we got what's happening with fast food and the processing and how the food is being, you know, um, commercialized and how it's being, how it's being presented at one point it was healthy, but now it's not so healthy. And now you have all these additives, preservatives, things are actually going into the foods, our everyday foods that we used to eat and the sugars, the way that sugar is affecting our system. We, we consume more sugar as a whole for as smart as our country is, I'm sorry, I mean, this is, don't take this offensively, but as smart as our country is, we're really kind of a stupid population to sit here and look and not say, wait a second, wait a second. Something's not adding up. Something's not right. Because I'm really not eating that many calories. I'm not really taking in that many calories. I'm really not. So what's happening? So Shakeology. What Shakeology does, why Shakeology works, why Shakeology is something that is not just for those who want to lose weight, but my kids drink it, I drink it, I don't need to lose weight, I'm, I drink it every single day. Um, my husband, who has uh, ulcerative colitis, has had it for years before he even met me, who I now have off all his medication that the doctors swore he would never be able to come off because he's been on it for so long, and I said, nope, that's not true. That's not true. You just have to make changes to your diet, but we're not going to get into that tonight. But um, it goes into your system, okay? So it's, it's giving back your digestive system first, the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we no longer get from food. So if your body was getting the right amount of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients prior to Shakeology, okay, your circulatory system has hair-like fibers. Its circulatory system surrounds your digestive system. So if I draw pictures sometimes because it's just the way that I, I roll. So if this was your digestive system, okay? So this is your gut, right? You guys all see that? So that's your gut. 
And then cilia, it's like hair-like fibers on the ends of your circulatory system. I'm totally like recreating a, I told Whitney I don't do slides, I, I draw. <laughs> um, so think of like your celiac, or they have like little hot, like hair-like fibers. They, they, they're like real receptors, okay? So they, they take these nutrients from your digestive system. That's within your circulatory system. And they're taking it to your major muscle groups and organs. It's your circulatory system that gets out to your major muscle groups and organs, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that those organs and those muscles need to survive, to be healthy, okay? So blood to your muscles is like food to your stomach. The only way that your muscle is going to grow is if it's broken down and it gets the right amount of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients from the body's circulatory system because the circulatory system transports vitamins, minerals, and nutrients to the major muscle groups and organs, okay? You guys all follow me so far? <laughs> Do you guys know you guys are going back to school tonight? Like getting a good anatomy lesson? Okay. Um, you're like, dang it, I should have had a few beers before I came to class. This really sucks. Um, so. No, this is I awesome, Rachel. I love it. Keep going. Okay. Good. All right. So now, okay, so Shakeology goes in, stabilizes your digestive system, right? Prior to Shakeology, what was going out there? What, when, what goes out to the body first is whatever is a lipid or a liquid form, okay? So fat goes out first. You guys ever browned any kind of ground beef? Anybody? Make tacos with ground beef, hamburgers, do it in a skillet? No? Uh, okay, so you know when you have all that fat that kind of goes up to the top, okay, and then you take the ground beef, you push it to the side. Have you guys ever put like a little towel up there and try to get some of that fat to come drain down? If you don't get all the fat from the pan, well, what ends up happening in about an hour after you take all the ground beef off? Does it congeal? Look kind of white, slimy? You guys ever seen like cold fat? It, it's slimy and white and it, and it feels kind of like grease. Yeah, like Crisco, but only it was, it's got a stinkier smell because it came from an animal. Um, so that's fat and in your system, fat goes in and it's a liquid form because you're eating and your digestive system is, is taking it all in. It's in your gut and it's hot. So what goes out first prior to Shakeology is whatever is in a, whatever's in a liquid form. So lipid goes out, fat, uh, out first, okay? So just like anything, when your body goes to a resting heart rate, everything cools down. Everything in your body cools down because your heart is not beating as fast. So therefore, there's not as much blood circulating. So things cool down. Well, if fat went out first, what happens to that fat inside the circulatory system? What happens to the fat if it's not being burned and utilized? What happens to the fat around your major muscle groups and your organs? It congeals. And it stays there. And that's what clogs your arteries. That's what clog clogs up your circulatory system that causes bad circulation, causes arthritis, causes all sorts of issues and all sorts of secondary long-term issues that while it may not be so terrible when you're younger or when it maybe even if you are younger, but maybe it's not so bad the first six months, but over time, it causes some major secondary issues, okay? So... Shakeology now is coming in to your body, giving your body the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that it needs to support a healthy circulatory system. So your circulatory system is getting out to your major muscle groups and organs, vitamins, minerals, nutrients that it needs to support its growth. That in turn sends messages to your pituitary glands up here in your big old beautiful brains, sending messages up there saying, hey, guess what guys, I'm satiated, I'm full, I'm good. I don't need anything else because I'm happy. My muscles are fed, my organs are good, my circulatory system is working and functioning fine, and that, my friends, is what supports your metabolism naturally. When all these things work together, your metabolism starts to work, it works to the best it's supposed to. Hey babe, you gonna go work out? Hi team, yeah. Okay. Um, so I just pull the thing out of the treadmill? Yeah, I'm gonna put it back in. Oh, I'm gonna put it back in? Okay. okay. You're welcome. She's gonna work out. Peace out, team. Peace out, team.
that's my 13 year old. We have a gym, so she's going to go out to our little gym and work out. Um, so, um, try, I would not send her to the gym alone, just in case you guys know she's not going up to the gym. She's going outside to our gym. So just clear that up. Um, <laughs> It's like, wait a second, I don't want them to think I'm just dinner. Oh, yeah, see you later. Go take a hike. Maybe Uber will come pick you up. Why don't you call them? Um, so does that does that help you guys kind of see how that works in in Shakeology logic with how Shakeology is supported in the system? Okay. So when I have people say to me, I've been drinking Shakeology for three months and I haven't seen any differences whatsoever. And I'll say to them, okay, well, let's take a look at your diet. Oh, well, I've just replaced a meal, okay? But I, I, I still eat out at lunch because they go, to, they work at a corporate office. So they get whatever they get in the cafeteria. And then usually they come home and eat. Sometimes they eat pretty late, depending on how late their meetings have went. Or they just grab something really quick from like, you know, uh, Chipotle on the way home, but they always make sure they get the healthy stuff. Okay, well the problem with that is that, well, while you think it's healthy for you just to grab something on the way home, you're still not, you're still not giving your body the balance of what it needs, right? So while you, you may not be gaining any weight, but you're not gonna be losing any weight either. Because when you try to, when I try to, create a meal plan for my team, for my new customers, for my patients, whatever it is. Remember, I am still decreasing. So you're decreasing the amount of caloric energy. So one calorie is one unit of energy. So if I'm taking away 500 units of energy from your daily diet, okay, so you're at 2000 calories, and now I'm pulling out 500 calories, not only are you still losing you're losing vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, right? And you are replacing them with Shakeology, but if unless you are putting back into your system those vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that I've just taken out by decreasing your caloric intake by 500 calories, if you're not backing it up with the good foods that your body needs and you're just putting fatty foods that your body needs in there or just empty calories, guys, calories is a calorie is a calorie. So if you're saying, well, yeah, but you know, sometimes I'll just grab something really quick, but it doesn't have the right amount of nutrients. You're still, you're, you're not getting your amino acids from your, your proteins. You're still, you know, it's a daily dose, but it doesn't mean it's your only dose. And I really think that, and I did talk to Carl about this. I really don't think it should be a daily dose of dense nutrition. I think it should be a dose of, a, a dose of dense nutrition, not a daily dose, because people think, well, and I've had my, my nutrition, then why do I need to have anything else? Why can't I just eat garbage? If that's not the way that it works. Um, Second, I want you guys to think about this. All calories, this is something for you to really, for yourselves to think about in a nutrition way, but also when you're talking to your coaches and to your teams. All calories are not created equal, okay? So all calories are not created equal. You cannot have a, um, and this is why those high fat diets don't work. That's why these, these crash diets don't work. One gram of fat, one gram of fat is nine calories, okay? Now, I can take a big old thing of a big plate of peaches, okay? And or peaches and apples and pears and all this good fruit, right? It's going to give me so many nutrients and vitamins. And maybe it won't have protein, but what do you think would be better to have that or to have a New York or a ribeye steak with maybe a half of glazed apple or roasted peach or whatever. Like, if you really look at it, calorie for calorie, do I need to have some protein? Yeah, I do, but do I need to have that whole ribeye steak? That one, let's say the whole steak has 64 grams of fat. I'm not very good at math. That's never been my, my forte, but if you take 64 times nine, because one calorie or one gram of fat is nine grams. One, one gram of fat is nine calories. So if you take 64, anyone have a calculator? Actually, I do right here. So if you take 64, I'll do it for you real quick. All right. So 64 
64, you guys, probably, you guys math majors probably already figured it all out. 64 times, oh my goodness. I guess I don't have to use a calculator either. So that's 576 calories from fat. That's a lot of fat, huh? A lot of calories from fat. They're like, oh, it's only, you know, that's that's not even saying now. Now we don't know what percentage it is because we're not looking at the at the package. Each piece of meat's different. Then you would take the percentage and you would divide it amongst the entire calories, and they'll tell you what percentage fat you're eating. But those are things that you guys really need to think about. So when someone says to me, "Well, how is Shakeology going to help me lose weight?" I always say to them, "It's going to go in, stabilize your digestive system. It's going to give back your body the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients that we no longer get from our foods today." Farm to table, we're losing between 30 and 40%. That is a proven fact. That they, our foods are so commercially based that, and, and nobody's perfect, you guys. Don't tell me that none of you guys haven't had that, those Tyson chicken nuggets, because I know you all have, because I have. You know, I've given my kids Dinobites. I'm not going to lie. My kids love those things. They don't get them anymore unless they're on sample at Costco. And that's why my kids love to go to Costco because they're like, maybe they're going to have Dinobites today because I don't buy them anymore because they're not good. And, and it's not to say that you guys can't go and buy those things, but it's understanding that there are, this is why we have certain issues today. And not if, and I'm not saying that it's all bad. I'm just saying that to help you understand how we got here, this is how we got here. So by making these changes and by being proactive and by you making these changes yourself and understanding how Shakeology really truly works in the system is going to make you, first of all, it's gonna make you authentic. Second of all, it's going to give you the confidence to share. You're gonna be able to walk up to somebody and say, this is what it's done for me and this is how I know it is formulated and what it can do for you. It will support your digestive system. It will support your, your circulatory system. It's going to help your, your major muscle groups and organs. You are going to experience less muscle cramps. You are going to experience less hunger pangs because your, your body is going to feel satiated. You are going to have a better digestive system. You're gonna be a little bit more regular. And maybe that might take a little time because the fiber coming into your body your body's gonna go, woo, wait a second. You might go one way or you might go the other way, but it needs some time to stabilize, you guys. Okay, so if you guys have ever had anyone say, I have really bad gas the first two weeks that they're on Shakeology, it's because your body's digestive system is still trying to learn to stabilize. It's going through a stabilization process that is very, very, very normal. When I don't drink Shakeology for a couple of days, if I'm like on vacation or whatever, um, and I come back and I get back onto my regular, regular uh, scheduled programming, it takes my body a couple, two, three days. And I might go through a little gas pains here or there because I maybe didn't eat the cleanest while I was on vacation. So my body's trying to get through that. Um, I know for myself, if I'm going to have a cheat day and I know that we're going to go to like the carnival or go to the fair, I actually don't drink my Shakeology that day because my body is so hypersensitive. This is just me personally. My body's so hypersensitive that if I do drink Shakeology, I'll be very gassy and bloated and I'll get cramps, like stomach cramps, because my body won't be, well, be like, what in the heck did she just do? Because I'm, I'm usually pretty clean. So if you have somebody who eats pretty clean and then they bring in Shakeology and then they go out for a week, you know, weekend party with the girls or the guys or whatever, bachelorette party or bachelorette weekend or whatever it is, and they're like, oh my gosh, I was so sick. I think Shakeology is making me sick. No, Shakeology is not making you sick. It's just this is what happens and this is why this happens. So does that help you guys? Did I give you guys some good tidbits to walk away with? Are you guys feeling like you have a little bit more knowledge on Shakeology? Okay, I feel like the last 10 minutes before my husband comes home, I would love for you guys to be able to come off of your mute. If you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer them as effectively as I can. So go ahead, go nuts. This is your chance. Ladies, yeah, right? Jen. Yeah. Um. What? What would you say to someone who, um, just starting Shakeology and says they are constipated? Then, um, they need to drink more water. First of all, 
ask them about their water, how much water intake they're taking, how much water they're taking in. Um, and then ask them if they're making sure they're getting enough fruits. Sometimes it's just extra fiber. If they're really high or eating lots of greens, like um, arugula, um, spinach, those have a tendency because they're really, even though they're high in, the, they've got proteins and whatnot, they're also really high in fiber. Too much fiber can do the opposite thing. Okay. So talk to them. And sometimes too, if they're eating too many carbohydrates, that binds them up. Um, bananas have a tendency, always think about the brat diet, you know, when your kid is sick and the doctors put it, put you on a brat diet, which is bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. That's to, to, that, to glue things back together again. So you're not going to the bathroom 24 seven, right? So if they're taking in a lot of bananas, they're taking in a lot of breads and maybe some toasts and they're eating apples, like those are things that are going to bind their body back up to up, back up. So ask them, have questions, ask them open-ended questions for them to give you an answer. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I'll Rachel first and then Donna. Okay. Go ahead, Rachel. I like your okay. name, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I like yours too. <laughs> and you even spelled it correctly. I know, right? <laughs> Um, I was wondering, you started out kind of talking about your friend that had cancer, and I have a couple people I know that have different types of cancers, one of which is on chemotherapy, and the other one is not. Are there certain interactions with, with Shakeology and anything yes. else you will, or can you kind of elaborate a little bit for those people? You know, it's really hard from a clinical standpoint to be able to elaborate on something like that, because each cancer is very different, and chemotherapy, the cocktail that they put together is different person to person, case to case, patient to patient. Some chemotherapies, we always talk about what cocktail is it, um, it because it could be different and it could, depending on the, on the specific cancer. If you have someone who is not on chemotherapy, um, they're not in any kind of drugs or in maintenance mode or they're, they're in you know, remission, then they should definitely be on Shakeology. The goji berries that are in Shakeology are great to help control the free radicals in the system. Because we all have free radicals in our system, you guys. We all have cancer cells in our body. Every single one of us do. Um, it's just whether or not our bodies can fight. So um, giving your body the vitamins, minerals, nutrients that it needs, living a healthier life, making sure you're proactive, not reactive, um, is going to give you a better opportunity for that. Okay. And who else did we have? Was it April? Donna, I think. Donna. Hey, Donna. Hi. Hi. Um, I just had a quick question about um, vegan versus regular. Like, <laughs> um, and for some people have asked me this too, but for myself, um, I was doing the regular chocolate, which I loved. And then I switched to vegan because I'm trying to get away from dairy. Mm -hmm. And... I don't, I'm not quite sure how much I like it, but what's the difference? Um, I mean, I know all the ingredients are the same, but like what, if somebody was to ask me what the difference is, what would I say other than the dairy? Okay. So there, the difference is the, the protein. So there is, it's not necessarily the dairy cause there is no dairy on either side. Um, the difference is the protein. So what we use in the regular Shakeology is a whey isolate protein. The whey comes from a, it's, it's not even a dairy, but there is, um, it's, it's from a cow. Like, you know, the whey is, is a, I guess more from a goat. I'm not even sure if it's from a goat or from a cow, but I know it's from an animal because it's a whey. Um, <laughs> one of those animals. Um, so that's why the, the vegan is a pea protein. It's a pea and rice protein. Uh, a brown rice protein. So that's the difference is the protein. Um, and also too, there are certain, um, there are certain vitamins and minerals that come from whey that are not in the vegan formula. So you will see that the vitamins in the, in some of the minerals that are in the vegan formula are not in Shakeology and the regular chocolate or the regular strawberry. And the reason for that is because some of those vitamins that are in the way are derived from that particular source of protein and it's not, they don't have it. It doesn't cross over. Um, so that's why. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's Perfect. less dense in nutrients. It just means your body is synthesizing them a little bit differently. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. I have a, any, I have a question if there's anybody else. Okay, go ahead. This is Lainey Mertens. I have a gal that I didn't sign up, but I've come in contact with that has 
signed up for the beach body and she's diabetic and the shakeology she feels crashes her blood sugars. Do you have any suggestions, expertise for her? Um, I would suggest that she, um, she, I've got lots of diabetics on my team. So I, again, each patient is so different. And unless I, I see their blood work and, and I know it's really hard for me to give, like, a, I can't give any clinical anything, try to like, you right. know, it's hard. Um, but she, if she's a type, she's a type two diabetic, I take it. Um, she she's on be medication. Fine. She just, she can tell her blood sugars. Well, I think she's on just a regular PO medication, but she can tell that it really drops her sugars and she just feels jittery and shaky and tired and, it shouldn't she doesn't check I mean, it her really, blood sugars so yeah it should i mean she's checking her blood sugars it shouldn't um i would i would again i would have her keep a food list um mm -hmm. ask her to keep a food journal for, for five days and see where see what she's doing in those five days and then um it's again it's so hard because you you wouldn't know what to look for you know to see what what could be causing it but i would suggest excuse me, I would suggest that she takes um, just a little more time to be a little more, more aware of what she's eating and when. So just tell her to start writing it down. And maybe if it is happening, tell her to switch her Shakeology and have it at a different time of day. So okay. she's having right. three o'clock and there's a three o'clock crash that she or she usually feels. Um, I've got a couple of diabetic patients that have a normal crash right around 3.30 or 4. So they have their Shakeology at noon and they're fine rather than having it in the morning and, and then they're feeling that crash. So ask her if what's the consistency? Is it she drinks her Shakeology and then an hour later she's feeling crashed out? Like try to find out where and what is going on in terms of those numbers. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Anything else that's not necessarily clinical? I know I wish I could, I wish I could, help with every single person, but every, like if, if as a patient or like coming to me as a clinically, I have to look at like numbers to give any kind of like a, a diagnosis or to be able to help in that aspect. But any type of issues, I, yes, it's okay to breastfeed through. Yes, it's okay for pregnancy. Again, it's always a choice. Um, some women are just anti herbs a lot across the board. I, I personally was, I was pregnant with twins. And so I was like anti everything. Um, I didn't even take aspirin, like even though I knew I could, I wouldn't even have anything. Um, so, and that was just me. It was just a personal choice. It had nothing to do with anything or worrying about anything. That was just a decision that I made for myself. Um, I kind of just wanted to be like that whole, all like really take it all in and enjoy the moment type of thing. So um, anybody else? Yeah. What's that? You, said you were, it's Jennifer. Um, you were, you had talked earlier about Herbalife. Mm -hmm. and that, that main ingredients tree bark. The fourth so, ingredient. The fourth. The fourth. Okay. But what would you say about people who are like using isogenics? Like, is, can you kind of give us a, a Hold idea? On. Hey, Chloe. Yeah. Can you open the windows um, upstairs in the guest room, please? No. Thank you. What? No. Um, so with isogenics, I don't, like, I honestly haven't even, I don't even look. Um, I just know, I can't, and everyone asks me, like, why don't you, like, I'm like, because I know as a, as a dietitian, the only, the, and I guess I should have said this at the very beginning, the only meal replacement that has been approved, there's two that have been approved by the Academy of Dietitians and Nutritionists are one, it's called the standard formula. And it's basically like taking Metamucil and drinking it. It's disgusting. It's terrible. Um, it's called the standard formula. It's in most offices. And number two is Shigology. So it's not, it is not formulated for weight loss. And I think that's where we all get confused. It is not to be sold as a weight loss supplement. It is not to be sold as an after uh, energy drink. It is not to be sold as a post-workout. That's why we have the whole performance line. It is a meal replacement. Isogenics is not a meal replacement. It's a pre or post-workout. It's an energy. It's going to give you that buzz. It's going to give you that zip. And that's why they, they market it that way. They're two very different 
they're two very different things. Um, does it control your appetite? Yes, it does, because it's got a caffeine derivative in it. So it will control your appetite. It does give you that buzz. Um, I personally have never had it, and I, I will never have it, because it's got, it's got chemical, not, I don't want to say chemicals. It just has, um, it just has more caffeine in it that I prefer to take in. I, if I want a cup of coffee, I'm going to go drink a cup of coffee. I don't want to put it in a drink, you know, not with that many calories in it. Um, and I do drink coffee, just to let you guys all know. I don't get this much energy from not drinking coffee. This is an all shakeology. <laughs> what was the first part you said, Rachel? What is the thing that it's, um, <laughs> I'm so, what's it called? What is it? It's the, there's two things. And what are they? Can you repeat that for me, please? The standard formula. Oh, the standard oh, formula? Yeah, but what is, why, they're approved by something? I've missed that part. The Academy of Dietitians and Nutritionists. Thank you. That's the, that's the um, oh, thanks, Chloe. That's the governing body that I am licensed under. All dietitians, uh, DTRs, we're licensed under the Academy of Dietitians and Nutritionists. Those are, our, that's our, like, our board, our physician's board. That's huge. Yeah. Because I didn't know it, that. And I can yeah, use it, and and it has been clinically tested. Um, if you guys ever want some really great resources, and some of these doctors I know personally, if you guys have never watched One Hundred Doctors Wouldn't Lie, you guys should write that down. Google it. Um, it's it's a Beachbody video. I mean, Google the um, don't Google it from the other coaches that have put it on their page because they always put their little insignia and watermark on it. Um, but Google Beachbody or Team Beachbody or even go Shakeology YouTube, go to YouTube and go Shakeology 100 doctors wouldn't lie. And then the other one is Shakeology has been clinically tested. And then another one too, um, in case you guys didn't know this, we actually have a medical director on staff at over here at corporate that ran and put together the ultimate reset, which is amazing. Like, you know, to have an actual medical director running and taking on that program. So, these are legit. Like this isn't just something that Carl and, you know, Darren were sitting out having beers one night and decided to throw this stuff together. Like it's legit. Um, Darren Oleen, if you uh, went to YouTube and you did uh, Darren Oleen, just Google Darren Oleen, he actually takes you to the places to pull up. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that video. I love that video. I love traveling to Peru with him. And I would love to go to all of those places, to the Himalayans, and, and find all these great adaptogenic herbs and how they farm them and how they bring them in. It's really amazing. And I use those videos as well when I'm talking to people who aren't quite convinced. Um, very rarely does someone get off a phone call conversation with me and not end up signing up. I mean, it's very, very rare. Very rare. And, I, and they usually see seek me out like they're like by the time they come to me they're like okay you know what do I need to do and and it's I'm very consistent um if you guys want to follow me on my social media feel free um I have a health and fitness page that I don't do a lot of beach body stuff over there I do a lot of recipes um I share a lot of health tips so I keep my pages pretty 80 20 like 80 percent it's me it's recipes, it's meal planning, it's this, it's that. Nutrition is 80%, you guys. I don't care how much you kill it at the gym. I don't. You can be running a marathon. If you don't control what goes into your mouth, you will not have control of your health. So it's 80%. So own it. Okay? Amen. Carol, right. real fast. Can we get Carol? Yeah. Real quick, so I had somebody who was on Shakeology, but she was also a CrossFitter, and she was not losing weight. She was plateauing, and then she decided to try a low-carb diet. Um, and so then she said, I don't want to do Shakeology because you got too many carbs. So what do you, I don't know. Do you, um, you know, there's carbs in everything. There's carbs in, there's carbs in fruit, and that's where the carbs in Shakeology comes from, is from the fruit. You know, there's we there's fruits in there. There's goji berries. There's you know apples. There's you know bananas. There's carbs and bananas. We're all putting bananas in the shake loose. I know I am. Um, but you know uh, the cherries that they use and bilberry is actually um, a blueberry, and there's carbs in that. So, so just to kind of let them know that there are carbs in the fruits that we eat. And they can still be on a low carb diet. And actually, Shakeology is very, very, very low in complex carbohydrates. 
there's different types of carbohydrates. You have your simplex, you have your complex, and then you have your dietary fiber, which is also considered a carbohydrate. So you need to be very careful when you're looking at the carbohydrate complex to make sure that when they're looking at it, that the, if the dietary fiber, whatever dietary fiber is in there, minus that from the total carbohydrate grams as it is. So if something is, let's say, you know, 10 carbs and there's four dietary fibers, then you're really looking at six carbohydrates. So, so, and those carbohydrates still are, they could be simplex and, and, and complex together. So, all right. Awesome. Okay. Can I ask are one we, thing real quick? Yes. Um, is there like an age limit of like a child who could drink Shakeology? Like, is it okay to give us like a one year old or what? That's a good question. Again, that's just a personal preference. My kids are 13. So my daughter can drink a whole shake, which she does every morning because I don't, she hates breakfast. She absolutely despises breakfast. Unless it's 10 o'clock in the morning, she will not eat breakfast. And so when she's leaving the house at, you know, 7.45 in the morning to go to school, I make her a shake and it's every morning. Um, so they've been drinking Shakeology for like two years since I started. Um, my niece and nephew, four and five, they'll drink maybe a quarter cup or a half a cup. Um, and that's all that they really need. So it just really depends. I don't, I don't suggest anything to any parent when it comes to their kids. Um, we're all very, very protective of that. So I would just say use your discretion. Um, if your child likes it and they want, they're under the age of 10 and they want a half a cup, that's okay. And there, my, there's no, my, nothing harmful, right? I mean, it's all like healthy no, stuff. I would no, think. No, no, yeah, there's nothing harmful in it. Yeah. But you know, you just got to look at, at the child. You know, the, we're adults. Our bodies need more. Their kids, their bodies need less. But right. I, I'm come. That's not a clinical thing, or that's not a professional. I'm not giving you professional advice there. That's just a personal thing. I'm telling you personally, I would do a half a cup under the age of ten. Okay. My child, I'm sure you've heard this from me or I've talked about, but my child has been drinking it since he was four um, and he drinks half a scoop and he's still, he's seven and he still yeah. drinks half a scoop, but it leveled his blood pressure and he had yeah. a very high blood pressure. So yeah, absolutely. Half a scoop is fine. Half a scoop, half a serving, half a cup, same thing. Yeah, but uh, Dan wants to know which orange, which kind of expressing I'll is. come, I'll come and, I'll come and get it for him. Okay. okay. Okay, All let's right. wrap this up so Rachel can go on with her night and you guys can too. And I need to eat my ultimate reset dinner. Um, there you go. <laughs> um, right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're for welcome. Rachel, that was so helpful for us. I know we'll all love it. And I have the recording and we are going to dig this in our team. So awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, have yourselves a great night and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Right. Bye.